Charles, it's good talking with you today about the industry and things that are happening. Man, I, I just it, we read regularly in the paper about real estate sales, existing home sales, you know, being at a record low and and or maybe not an all time record, but going back a number of years. What what do home sales being down, existing home sales being down? What what really does that mean to the industry? Um, and and where we are, and maybe what we're going to see the next you know two or three years. Could you could you talk a little bit about that? So we obviously home sales are down. Uh, anyone who pays attention to real estate knows that. Uh, the good news is is that it's down to about four and a half million home sales in the U.S. So that is a tremendous number of home sales, and of course, the vast vast majority of that we're not currently doing. So we see this type of market as an opportunity, and it really is an opportunity. Uh, while other people are kind of hiding away and waiting for this little downtime to be over, uh, we're not. We're doing the exact opposite. We're looking for the opportunities. We're finding those opportunities, and we're gaining market share. So we are doing a larger percentage of the inspections today than we were a year ago or two years ago. So we're excited about the condition of the market, even though there's no doubt about it, it is in a down situation right now. The, the, we've got home sales this year, annual existing home sales, I think trending, you mentioned about four and a half million for 2023. I think Charles, just for some context, the best year ever was maybe 6 million? About 6.1. Okay. Uh, that's right. About 6.1 million is it was as high as it got. And that was uh, two years ago. And that was equaled again. Uh, what about 12 years before that in uh, about 2005. Got it. And I feel like what you're really, you know, saying, you know, speaking to is the fact that it's four and a half million is a long way from zero. There, there are homes being bought and sold, sold inspections are happening. Sure, it might be a little bit easier if we've got six or seven million homes, existing home sales in a year um, at, at four and a half. But it's interesting. Pillar to Post is actually increasing its market share. I think you've even talked about the fact that your existing revenue for your franchisees in the marketplace has climbed or it's holding. Maybe the dip isn't as much because also your offerings and the services that you offer with the home inspection uh, have allowed you to increase your average price per home inspection because you're offering more in that home inspection. I know I threw a lot at you there on that piece, but it, it, you want to kind of comment on any, any of that about that that uh, the market share, the cost of a home inspection and what you are doing to add value in that? Yeah. <clears throat> well, the first thing I'll uh, address is you, you talked about it being easier if we had, you know, the 6.1 million home sales. Uh in some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. Of, of, of course, our, our knee-jerk would be, yeah, the more home sales, the better. But the truth is, when, when you get that many home sales, and let me qualify that, that many. So in, in any normal year, uh, there is between five and five and a half million home sales in the U.S. That got up to 6.1 in 2021. Uh, well, that was so much higher than normal, it caused its own problems, right? There's not enough supply on the market. There were some waived inspections. Uh, so there were uh, every imaginable competitor was in the market, right? Because it looked like such a ripe opportunity. Compare that to today. Yes, we have fewer, home, uh, fewer homes being inspected or fewer homes being sold, but we also have fewer people in the market Realtors are not busy, busy, busy every single minute of every single day. So we have an opportunity now to get in front of them and tell them who we are uh, and get an, that's how we're getting more market share. Uh, we are visible. We are active in all of our markets. We're not hiding away, as I said before. And so that, in a way, these opportunities only present themselves when the market steps down a bit. So would we like to have more home sales? Sure. But are there advantages that come with fewer and are there disadvantages that come with a red hot market? Absolutely. So 
it all depends on how we look at this market. And we've chosen to look at this market as an opportunity. Uh, and we're seeing results from that opportunity. Would it be true in your industry, Charles, the home inspection industry, that one advantage of not having record setting existing home sales would be that, that you know, I, I'm thinking of the mortgage industry, and we'll see this happen again. When the interest rates start to go lower, all these new people will come into the mortgage industry. All of a sudden, we've got a bunch of new mortgage loan officers. When the interest rates are higher and there aren't this, there's not all this low hanging fruit just to show up and kind of, you know, you know, uh, uh, make a make some quick buck because there's just so many things going on. It sounds like that, it, that in your industry that maybe even some of the people that aren't really running a serious home inspection business, they're going to when it gets a little tough, they get out. So there might even be less competition at the four and a half million dollar existing home. So is that, is that, would that be true in the home inspection industry? That's, it's uh, amazingly true. So in virtually every market, uh, there are a number of inspectors who are so, sort of the stalwarts of the industry. Uh, and they do their business and they do their business year in and year out. Uh, we are, I think, always among that set of inspectors that I'm talking about. But then, then there's the ones you're talking about which they're only there during the boom time. And as soon as things get a little challenging, they just flee the market altogether. They might hold on to their home inspection license, but they just stop doing inspections and go take a job somewhere. So yes, we are in a time right now where all of those types of people, they're gone. Yeah. And that's where a lot of this opportunity comes from. If I'm your one of your existing franchisees, and you and I have talked about this before, um, if I'm one of your existing franchisees or certainly somebody out there that may be reaching out to your recruitment team to explore the possibility of becoming a pillar to post franchisee, you know, you see these headlines about waived inspections. You think, wait a minute, I'm sitting here potentially looking at a business that is around home inspections and I'm seeing reports and headlines in the media that says home inspections being waived or you hear stories of you, if you want to get your home and you're not willing to waive an inspection, good luck on trying to be the one that gets selected to buy the house. There's a lot of hype and untruths to that. Could, 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 could you just explain really what that means when we see select markets around the country that may have a period or going through a period or time of, of waiving inspections? Tell us about that. Well, it, when you talk about waived inspections, you really are talking about 2021 and say the first half of 2022. Remember, it was the second half of 2022 where the interest rates started to go up. That's when the home sales started to go down. Before that, that's when we were at that unrealistically high 6.1 or 6.2 million home sales in the US. Well, there wasn't enough supply to keep up with that. So there's multiple bids on every house that sells and houses are selling after being on the market for what, two days, <clears throat> right? It was a, it was a yeah. crazy, crazy time. Well, it got so competitive to buy a house that people did waive inspections in a lot of cases. It wasn't all the time. We still did a ton of business through that time, but it did become an issue. It was a real issue that we were dealing with. Well, today, the market has completely changed from that. So does that mean there's no waived inspections now? No, that I, I've, I've never known a time when there weren't some waiving of inspections. Uh, but it's now it's only in pockets in, in various markets around uh, the U.S. and Canada. Uh, but it, it is it is so much smaller of a concern that it was in 2021 that we don't consider it much of a concern today. So if you're hearing a lot about waived inspections today, some of it's probably true in pockets, but the majority of it is probably leftover thinking from a year or a year and a half ago. Uh, um, boy, we've been spoiled for a long time where we, you know, mm -hmm. at 30 year mortgages, even below 3% in some cases in the past. And hanging around that three and certainly under four for, you know, many, many years now. 
I think the latest 30 year mortgage that's on the market right now is around 7.2 maybe or so just, you know, around the 7%, you know, mark or so. Um, your thoughts on the interest rates, where we are with that, what impact that's, you, you referenced it as the impact of, of one of the reasons existing home sales have, have decreased. Thoughts, feedback yeah. on that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is certainly the news of the day, right? Uh, higher interest rates, especially coupled with the higher cost of housing as we went through this big uh, time of inflation through COVID. Uh, that that inflation has disappeared uh, and starting to actually wane a little bit. Uh, but the interest rates are, like you said, 7, 7.1, 7.2, something like that. So that is certainly the thing that has slowed down the home sales, as we talked about being down to, you know, four and a half million or so uh, for, for this full year. Uh, the The truth is, is that we were spoiled. You spoke to it. We, we we were spoiled in a market that was a really an unrealistic market. So uh, if I ask people this question, virtually nobody gets it right, which is if we look at the last 30 years, what has been the average interest rate on a 30 year fixed mortgage? And the answer is 7%. <laughs> yeah, so we're at the average. So what's interesting is that today we think of 7% as skyrocketing interest rates. But the truth is we've only gotten back to average. So does that help our situation? No, because consumers look at that 7% and think it's really high and gosh, I can't afford to house buy a house. I'm going to have to wait till the interest rates come down. But since we do know it's average, we, we know that long, long term, we are going to be in and around this 7% probably for quite some time. So uh, the truth is next year, uh, most economic experts are looking, real estate economic experts are looking at it going down, probably closer to six, possibly in the high fives by the end of the year, but more likely down to six. And so what, what has been happening is that we've we've had about two and a half years now of a lot of people who wanted to buy a house, but either because of low supply, super high demand or inflation or whatever, uh, and, and then later on rising interest rates, uh, they have chosen to put that on hold. Well, or at least a number of them have. Uh, there's still four and a half million who are still buying houses, right? That, that's the thing we have to keep reminding ourselves. But uh, all that is doing is, is creating pent up demand. These people are not not buying a house ever, right? They just, they still want to buy it. They're just putting it off. They're putting it off to see what happens. Another thing that they're doing is they're putting it off until they can wrap their own mind around what does a good deal look like? No one wants to buy a house and then six months later, the interest rates are back down to 3% and uh, you know, housing prices have dropped 10%. But over time, people start to reimagine in their mind what a good deal looks like. That combined with all this pent up demand, we believe is setting us up in the near future for a tremendous amount of business that's going to come our way. As a matter of fact, I would go even further and say, my biggest concern, and certainly of the leadership at Pillar to Post, our biggest concern in the near future is that we are not going to be able to ramp our business up fast enough to take care of all this pent-up demand that's being pent up right now. So we're really excited about the future, but we're also concerned. We're concerned that we're not going to have enough inspectors to take advantage of that market as it comes back. You've been around the home inspection industry for more than a few years, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, give me a little bit of your experience in the home inspection industry and just a little highlights of, of leading up to becoming uh, the CEO of Pillar to Post. Yeah, that, that was the nicest way of saying you're getting old. I've never <laughs> heard anyone ask a question. Uh, no. Uh, so I, I came in, uh, I was in a completely different uh, industry prior. 
but I came into Pillar to Post in 1998. So 1998 was only about four years after the founding of the company. So much, much smaller. Uh, I think there were about 50 franchise business owners uh, when I came in. Uh, virtually none of those, very few were in the U.S. at the time. Uh, and so, and we were even in an industry at the time that, of course, people did home inspections, but it wasn't a given like it is today. Today, most people, if they buy a house, they e expect and intend on getting a home inspection. Back then, we spent about as much time talking people into why you should have a home inspection as why you should use pillar to post. So it was a different world, but pillar to post and our philosophy and our basic system of doing business, it was the same then as it is now. Now I'll tell you, it has changed considerably, of course, because of technology and all the different things that we've added to our, our offering. But our basic fundamental way of going to market was the same then as it is now. So when I came in, uh, I was in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, I started my own home inspection franchise there. But at the same time, back then, uh, I was what we called uh, a regional director. That's what we call a regional director today. So I was helping people to get into the business, and then I was supporting those people all the way along. So I did both of those for a little over 10 years. And so we, we grew up a pretty large home inspection company in Raleigh. I had multiple inspectors and marketing people and uh, ad admin people in the office and all of that. But and we did that for 10 years and uh, thousands and thousands uh, of inspections. But I think I probably learned more about the business by supporting that other 25 or 30 people that I brought into the system and helped them come up through the ranks and build their businesses. It was, it was such an opportunity for me because I could learn it firsthand. But then I had this opportunity to learn the business through the eyes and through the experiences of all of these other franchise business owners. So it was about that time, this was about 2008, uh, the then CEO of Pillar to Post gave me a call and wanted to know if I was interested uh, in selling my business and coming to run operations, the operations side of Pillar to Post in US and Canada. So that was a very difficult decision. Uh, I love being self-employed. To that point, I had been self-employed my entire life. I had been in small business my entire life. Uh, and so that was a big decision, but I did it. I'm, I've never regretted it. Uh, Pillar to Post has grown tremendously since then. And then as of January of this year, 2023, uh, I was honored to step in as the president and CEO of Pillar to Post. So uh, that's a that's a long tenure, about uh, 25, 26 years, uh, roughly. Yeah, uh, it, it's in powerful. home inspection and pillar to post. Going back to 1998, when I think you said there were around 50 or so franchisees in the system. Yep. Today there are 500. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, 10 times that size in 25 years. <clears throat> Charles, the the kind of zeroing in. And, and piggybacking off what you were just sharing about, all, you know, your 25 years uh, in the home inspection industry. You brought a lot of people in as small business owners in this industry. You've, you've, uh, you know, seen the evolution over, you know, two and a half decades. Why, why is, why is a home inspection? And I'm, and I'm sure you'd say it's not for everybody, but as, assuming we're talking about somebody that is, gone through your process and they're realizing they are a fit. They do, you know, they kind of fit into the, what you're, what you're looking for uh, as a candidate for a new franchisee. Why is this a good business? Why, why is home inspection something worth considering? Could you share some of the highlights and thoughts about just out of all the choices out there and this and that, why, why, what, what makes home inspection potentially a good small business for somebody? Yeah. You know, that's a tough question because uh, everybody has their different needs. But but if you're if you're looking, uh, if you're if you're looking for something and you think that something is small business ownership, uh, I think 
home inspection offers a, a great opportunity. Uh, number one, it's it's low cost to get into. Uh, we don't carry inventory. Uh, we don't even carry receivables, uh, right? So it, it it it's a it's a very manageable business, and you get into it. You can get into it very small, working by yourself. Uh, you you don't need anybody else to start. But that's just it's easy to get into. And when I say easy, don't get me wrong, there's a ton to learn. The most common thing I hear about people when they get out of training is, man, I feel like I've been drinking off the fire hose, right? <laughs> it, it's a lot to learn, but it is absolutely learnable. And we have some of the best trainers and the best training system that is in this industry. There is no, no doubt about that. So that's just getting you started. If, if that's as far as you went, I would say, I don't know, maybe it's not the best opportunity in the world. Uh, a lot of people are happy uh, being a, a small uh, a small operation. But the, the thing that I love about this opportunity, I got to live it, I get to see lots and lots of other people living it, is that you start in that small, simple way. And then there is just almost no limit to how big you can get. We've got guys that started in our system uh, at, at the lowest possible level, and now they're the largest of the large in our system. So anybody and everybody can do it. Uh, when I say do it, I mean, grow to those levels. If, if you can succeed with one or two men or one or two people in your company, you can succeed with 10 or 20 or 50, right? It can keep, it, it is a scalable model that works wonderfully. The second thing I would tell you is it it is profitable, the money is there, but the other thing that I would really stick out uh, and, and say is I've talked to so many people, I was one and I've talked to so many more. People that are in this business love this business. The ones that still do inspections, they love inspecting. They love getting out there and talking about the business. They love hiring their employees and training them and working with them. And like it, it really truly is an enjoyable business. So it's easy to get, get into. Uh, you won't know what you're doing, but we have the best trainers in the world to, to get you to that piece. We've got the best support. Uh, after that, we've got the best marketing after that. So there's the system is in place. And then it is so scalable uh, that you can take it to virtually any level that you'd like to take it to. 25 years, you've been in the home inspection industry, now the CEO of the world's largest home inspection franchise. Um, and that's just in the U.S. and Canada. You haven't even tackled, uh, uh, you know, other continents yet, right? Right. That's um, right you've seen pillar to post specifically go from 50, you know, to 50 franchisees to 500. It was interesting. You said earlier how, when you first started in this, you used to spend so much of your time having to convince people to do a home inspection that, that makes me reflect because, you know, my family has, you know, more than a few uh, residential homes in our investment portfolio. We always do a home inspection. And, and it's with your franchisee out of Harker Heights here in Central Texas. And um, we always do a home inspection on every bit. It's just a standard procedure for us. So it's interesting. You've seen the business evolve over 25 years to where you used to have to talk people into doing them and telling them why they're important to now it's kind of a given. I mean, it, it, it's well, we talked about it earlier when, when there's inspect inspections being waived. That's the exception that makes a headline. So it's become almost like breathing in the real estate industry. You you just do inspections. That's what you do on a home. Where does it go from here, Charles? What, what's, what's the next evolution of home inspection? If somebody getting into this business today, where, where's it going over the next 5, 10, 15, maybe even 20 years? Right. Well, uh, I think I think there's a, a few different fronts on that. Um, number one, I would say that the majority of this industry uh, is still what we would call fragmented. Uh, it, it is, it is um, uh, the vast majority of it is done by small one and two man operations. Most of those are one man operations. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things that we're seeing today, we see it in our system, uh, and, and we even see it outside the system, is a bit of consolidation. So one thing I think that, that we'll see is fewer inspectors, but or I shouldn't say that, fewer inspection companies who have more inspectors. So that, that growth, that multi-inspector model, uh, consolidation of the industry, all of that, that is one thing that is happening now and I think will accelerate over time. Uh, the other thing, I don't th think we're going to see any movement in people moving away from doing home inspections. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it, it is uh, the largest purchase that most people are ever going to make. They are nervous about that. And even if they're not nervous, they're, they're wise about their money. So they want to know what they're buying before they sign on the dotted line. So home inspections aren't going anywhere. With that said, that is what we call transactional home inspections, a home inspection that happens at the transaction of someone buying a house, someone selling a house. Uh, there is a lot more to come, though, uh, around that. What about all of the people who live in a home, who maybe have lived in that home for years, and they either don't have the ability, don't have the knowledge, or don't have the interest to keep an eye on that house, keep that house maintained. We believe there's a market, and we're we're launching into that this year. We believe there's a market to go out and market ourselves, not to realtors and people who are buying houses, but people who own houses that need to keep those things maintained. We're not a maintenance company. We're not going to be out there hammering nails, but you need someone that knows homes, knows the systems in those homes, and can keep an eye on that house, put together uh, uh, an easy to use report uh, and help you keep your house maintained, hopefully before those maintenance items become big dollar items. Uh, and it, it's a great way for customers to save money, save aggravation and make their home last a whole lot longer. So we believe that is one of the items. We've got a few other items that are similar to that that have to do with the, the, the direct consumer, uh, but that is a total expansion of the entire industry. We are at the very beginning of that. Uh, just, I mean, the very beginning. And so we're really excited both about the transactional business as we continue to consolidate the business and grow our franchise business owners larger and larger. And as we look into this next wave of inspection needs that exist out there today, but absolutely no one is taking advantage of them. Charles, that translates to me a little bit. I, you know, fascinating that, you know, a best practice and something that's highly encouraged is go see your doctor once a year and get an annual checkup. Right. Um, you know, most states require you inspect your car once a year, right? I mean, it, it wasn't at the transaction of when you were going to sell your car. It's it's to keep it registered, to have a state inspection. So, I mean, you, you're this would be a whole new revenue stream for the home inspection industry. And it sounds like Pillar to Post is already having these thoughts and plans and thinking about how do we how do we capture on the opportunity to we help somebody maybe with an inspection when they bought it. Now let's be let's be there for them once a year or on some kind of frequency basis to where, you know, they're we're helping them do their annual checkup. Like you said, you're not the electrician, you're not the plumber, you're not, but if you can watch these things, we also aren't going to call out a separate plumber, electrician, roof guy, I, uh, so foundation uh, leveling company. We're not going to call all these people out individually to come out once a year, do an inspection or whatever the frequency would be. Am I understanding that right, Charles? Is that really what you're talking about is an annual, some kind of frequency of inspection and keeping an eye on your house for you? That, that That's exactly it. So everybody knows homes need maintenance, uh, but not that many people actually do a thorough maintenance inspection uh, on a regular basis. If they did, they would catch things in the earliest of stages. It would be very easy to fix and save a ton of money. 
we are just bringing to the fore the thought of bring someone out who knows houses inside and out and knows all of their systems. Have us go through and look at that and produce a, a, a little report and help you prioritize that report. I want to back up, though, and say, Art, that this is this is not a new idea in home inspection. People have talked about it for the last four or five years, probably, but no one has the ability to do it. But being the industry leader, being the largest in the industry, we do have the ability. So we are, we are like I said, at the very beginning of this thinking, uh, but we're excited about the opportunity and we're going to see where it leads. Uh, either way, we're going to be driving forward with that transactional inspection that I was talking about. Uh, and growing our franchise business owners where we they end up having more and more and more inspectors as we gain more and more of that market share that we talked about earlier. Technology. You know, when we, when we look at the future, you, any paper that you open up, whether it's a business publication or not, artificial intelligence, data analytics, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. so much around um, uh, information gathering up how we're using it and how we're utilizing technology in our business. Pillar to Post is a leader in the tech and in, in how technology is being used. And I know this firsthand as a customer of Pillar to Post in seeing how I get my inspection delivered, how, how it's uh, uh, digitally produced, ready for me so quickly, payments online, all of those tools. Could you talk a little bit about the competitive advantage Pillar to Post has and how y'all separate from the industry in your use of technology and where that's going? Sure. Well, the, the first thing I'll say is uh, we don't let technology drive our company. We drive the company in, in a way that we are determined to provide the best experience for our customer from the beginning to the end. From the time you place a phone call or send us a text or online, uh, make a request for an inspection, whatever it happens to be through the inspection, through the production of the inspection, through your experience of that inspection and beyond. What we do is we look for technology that can help us deliver that experience better than anyone else. That's an important part point to remember, we are not looking for technology and how can we shoehorn that in to our business so that we're, we can say we're a technology company. We are trying to design the best experience for our customers and the realtors who refer us. And we find uh, technology that helps deliver that in the best experience possible for the least cost in the most efficient way. So that's what we're trying to do with technology. And I, th I think that's what we've been able to do so far. Uh, so uh, an example is uh, in our inspections, of course, if you, and if you look online, you can, you can see all of this, but you, you mentioned uh, that uh, once someone purchases or, or uh, yeah, purchases a home inspection for us, uh, they will get uh, their three packages. We have three packages of every inspection. Uh, they can choose that package. They can change that package. It, it, it comes to them almost immediately after they book the inspection. Uh, we have added services. So whether it's radon or sewer scoping or water testing, whatever it is, uh, they can make those choices. Then they can move right ahead. And we have what's called a visual inspection agreement. Every state has a requirement for one. Uh, we've got it right online. And the customer can read it and sign it, initial it electronically right online. All of this can be done in minutes. And then, as you said, you actually have the option to pay for it online as well. Uh, very simple system, very user-friendly. But then it moves to the inspection. And when we come to do the inspection, uh, depending on the package that you get, uh, we have a few things. We have something called uh, PTP estimates. PTP estimates is a a neat thing that is uh, powered by a company called BossCat. Uh, and when we do an inspection, uh, the customer can click a button and choose to have this company price out all of the repair items that are on that list. 
It's just a, an assistance to the customer and to the real estate agent. Uh, we have um, PTP Home Manual. PTP Home Manual is a technology piece. It's automatically part of our upgraded inspections. Uh, and the, the, the customer, number one, gets a, a recall check on all their appliances. If there's an active recall, it'll tell them there's one and it'll tell them who to, who to call and how to uh, remedy that recall. Uh, and there's a number of other things on there, including their appliances in their house. It, it will go online. It'll find the owner's manual for your exact appliance and put it in your home manual for you. Uh, this is just all... In, in an effort to make the experience of the customer, both with the inspection and with living in their home, better. And then lastly, we have PTP 360 and PTP floor plan. This is a, a 360 degree tour of the house. We take these 360 degree pictures both inside and out of the house. And when we finish the inspection, it comes with uh, every report, uh, every inspection. And uh, not only will you be able to look around your home in 360 degree form, but all of the comments from our home inspection per room will show up on the screen while you're looking at your 360 degree report. It, it is an awesome experience for people to understand in context, the comments that were written in their report. And then lastly, in our premium and prestige, it also comes with a measured floor plan. So not only do you get that tour of the home, uh, but you get a measured floor plan of the house you're buying. How hard is it to get a measured floor plan of a house you're buying that's 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 years old? Right. And, and we'll produce it for you automatically. So it's all, none of that would be possible without technology. But all of that technology is to improve the experience that our customer has when they're dealing with us. But it's just one part of what we do. Well, a lot of wisdom in that because, you know, a lot of times technology is the tail wagging the dog where we're, we're it's just for technology's sake. Right. Maybe it's a, 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 a you know, a, a, a very attractive whistle or a bell or something that you're going after and you're forgetting to connect it back. What is it actually doing to adding to the value proposition and increasing the experience for the, you know, for the end user, you know, for the client and other parties involved, like you said, real estate agents. There are thousands of home inspectors across the country in Canada, across U.S. and Canada. Um a lot of them, you you know, you've shared some of this information with me that a lot of it's, you've said it's very fragmented. There, there's not even, even with pillar to post being the largest home inspection group in the world at 500 franchisees and the, and plus the inspectors that work for your franchisees, you're still just a fraction of the percentage of overall uh, inspectors across. Am I, am I right on all my numbers there? Yeah, you're, you're you're correct. Uh, okay, uh, and and we probably have close to close to a thousand inspectors overall. Okay, but but you're right that it, and we still are only doing a fraction of the inspections that are out there. You know, from my background, that I over in the print industry when I was CEO of a franchise in the print industry, that um, this was a um, because it made sense in the marketplace. There were a lot of I'm guessing. In the home inspection industry, there may be a number of home inspector, small business owners out there that are not connected with a franchise that may be looking for the systems and support and the training and the marketing programs that a company like Pillar to Post offers when they come in. You also, I'm guessing, have to have a number of people out there that may say, look, I love my business. I'm not looking to join Pillar to Post, but I'm at the end of my chapter and I want to move on to the next chapter in my life. And they may want to sell their business or maybe they want to stop being a small business owner and sell to someone and maybe be a home inspector with that other person's business. This, all these existing businesses out there, whatever their question is, help selling their business, wanting to convert to become a pillar to post franchisee uh, or, or maybe a pillar to post franchisee buys their business. What do you say to that? Those, those, uh, those owners out there running their home inspection business that, uh, you know, might be a reason to at least consider pillar to post 
and uh, have a conversation with you. What, why would why would they maybe look at that? What would you say to that? Yeah, well, um, uh, I would say a little bit. It, it's the same uh, with with people who aren't in the business and they're looking. They think possibly to get into the business. Uh, pillar to post is not right for everyone. Franchising is not right for everyone, uh, and, and I don't think for existing fr- uh, at home inspectors that pillar to pi- post is right for all of them. And I'll give you a couple of, for instance, or at least one. So if if you're a single inspector, uh, small, uh, satisfied uh, home inspector who is in business for themselves, they're independent, and their business is doing everything they want it to do. They don't want to grow. They're not looking to go to the next level, hire more inspectors, and, and go, go, go. Pillar to Post is probably not worth coming to for you. Okay. But what if we're that same person, but they're not satisfied? They want to get to the next level and the next level and the next level. And they just don't feel like uh, they know enough or have enough support or there's too many questions. They're just not sure about it, but they want to. Well, in that case, I think quite possibly pillar to post would be a good opportunity for you to go from being an independent to being one of our franchise business owners. We do know how. We have the marketing, we have the experience, we have the coaching, we have the training, we have we have all of that to get to whatever level you would like to get to. So when we do have people, I've got one in particular in mind uh, that uh, was in business for 20 years. And he said, I'm just, I, I want to get, and he threw out what his goal was and it was really pretty high. And he said, I have just come to realize I've been trying to do it for 20 years. I can't do it. I know you guys do it. So he came over and became a Pillar to Post franchise business owner. And that was a great day for him. It was a great day for us. And that's continued to go well. Well, there's more, of course, that have done it as well. So I would say if you are looking, if you're in the business and you want to go to those next levels, but you just feel like you need some help, uh, this is something that Pillar to Post is something that may be a very good answer for you. Why? What could be the reason why, if somebody's out there operating their home inspection business today, regardless of how well or not well they're doing, you know, at the end of the day, what is it that might be a compelling reason for them to at least reach out to you and have a phone conversation, have a conversation? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the important thing about being in the business is number one, you've got to enjoy the business, right? You got to, you got to love the business. Uh, I think whether you're independent or whether you're a, one of our franchise business owners, you can love the business. But the real big thing when it all comes down to it is uh, our franchisees, uh, I'm sorry, let me back up. Our franchise business owners uh, far outpace I- anyone else when it comes to their system-wide sales, their their sales of their, of their company, their profits. And then ultimately, and this is really important, ultimately, the equity that they build through the time they own this business, in other words, they're able to sell their business for far more than you can sell a non-pillar to post business. So those three things, much higher gross sales, higher profit, and a much higher equity value for when it's time to sell that business down the road. You work with so many franchisees at Pillar to Post. What are the top two or three traits and that you see behaviors, skill sets, just that and and maybe maybe we take loving the business and being passionate about what they do. Maybe we give that as a given. You know, that that let that, that that's because we know generally successful small business owners have some version of being excited and passionate about what they do, regardless of the industry. But specifically to pillar to pillar to post. What are what are some things that you see that when you think of your top 20% franchisees, 
and what that group does day in and day out, week in and week out, what sets, separates them from the middle 60 and certainly your bottom 20% of franchisees coming in? What do they do? Yeah, I I would, um, you know, I, th there's a, a handful of answers that, that come to mind, but I think if I were going to boil it down, it, it would be that these three things. Uh, number one is you have to have confidence. You have to have confidence in yourself and you have, have to have confidence in your system. So when I think about our best producers uh, uh, that, that go up to three, three and a half, four million dollars in sales in, in our company, uh, when I think about them, I think about confidence. They're, they don't only believe they can do it. They believe their team can do it. And they believe that the product that Pillar to Post provides to their customers and realtors is second to none. They have that confidence right now, right? So, of course, if you're thinking about coming into this business, you, you may not have that confidence yet. But that is the, an important part about being a part of the largest brand in home inspections with the best training and the best technology and all those things we've talked about. That's where your confidence comes from when it comes to the system. So now the only part that you have to provide is that confidence in yourself. So number one is confidence. Number two is determination. I don't care what small business you start. I don't care if it's independent or if it's franchised or if it's in Texas or if it's in North Carolina or if it's in Saskatoon, right? It doesn't matter. You have to be determined, right? So if you're confident and you got a great system and you go out there, it will take determination and drive to see that, that opportunity and see all that to come to fruition for you. And then the third thing, and this almost seems like a given, if you're, if you're listening to this, you might think, I'm going to say, you have to be the type of person that wants to follow the system. That doesn't mean you're a follower. You are a leader because you own and you lead your business. But the, by joining a franchise, by joining Pillar to Post, you are acknowledging that We've got systems and technology and training and a brand that's in place that you are able to use. When you use that, when you follow that system closely, uh, that with determination and with confidence, that's when the success comes. The number one thing when I hear someone say, yeah, I talked to, to a lot of your franchisees to see what they think. Uh, I said, well, what's the number one message that you came away with? 99% of the time, they say, they told me to follow the system. So if you think you're the type of person that can't follow a system, won't follow a system, has no intentions of following a system, then franchising pillar to post is not for you. But if you've got confidence in yourself and you're a determined, driving, hardworking person, and you are willing and, and, and excited about following this system that we've proven for 25, 28 years, uh, that is the combination that results in that skyrocketing sales and the guys who are in the system for a really long time. Charles is CEO. Um, I know you get questions you know, from franchisees, certainly your recruitment team gets questions from candidates looking uh, to possibly become a pillar to post franchisee, kind of the crystal ball question, you know, you know, everybody's always looking for predictions and forecasts and uh, you know, the, there's, I, I just, I just thought maybe you might have some thoughts as far as, you know, in the crystal ball thing about what you see happening over the next year, two years, three years, I don't know. Just what do you, what, what do you think is pretty likely to happen within the next three to five years? Yeah. Well, in the short term, uh, you know, uh, over the course of the rest of this this year, 2023, uh, we don't see a whole lot changing. Right. It, 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 we're, we're at this run rate of home sales right now. Uh, we're just continuing to find those opportunities, capitalize on those opportunities and build market share. That's what we're doing. But I think the question is more about 
where do I see the market going? So yeah. most people, you know, the uh, economists, uh, they all have different opinions and, and they do vary. But what most people see is uh, that uh, inflation is getting under control. Uh, they, they think that the, the interest rates are going to start ticking down toward the end of this year and into the beginning of next year. Uh, to what degree? No one's very sure. They think it will continue to tick down throughout the rest of next year, uh, but still probably not going down lower than the high fives or maybe 6% that will make a big difference in the overall market. Uh, it, and so what we believe is going to happen is that we're going to work on the same plan we've been working the rest of this year through the end of this year. And as we get into the beginning of next year, we are going to be working on capacity. Because as I said earlier, when that market begins to come back, it can come back. We expect that it will come back faster than we'll be able to scale larger. So we're going to be preparing for that from day one of next year uh, as that market begins to come back. So uh, the the number one thing I would say is we're we're not worried about it coming back. Uh, you know, it, it, yeah. if it's at four and a half million and it goes up to 4.8 or maybe even five, right, it would be helpful. Uh, but that is not what we're building our business plan on. Uh, our business plan is on being visible, getting out there, taking advantage of the opportunities and grabbing market share. And then early next year, that is going to even shift. We'll continue to do those things, but we're going to shift to a capacity question where we're going to be worried and working on building our capacity of inspectors so that as that market does continue to come back yes. next year, we're going to be able to take advantage of it. So we're excited for that. And then long term, I spoke earlier about pent up demand. We've had a two or three years now uh, of people that are putting off buying a house first because there wasn't weren't many choices out there. And, and then the interest rates went up. And well, this is a pent up demand. And so long term, when we get late in the next year and into 2025, we really believe it is going to go through the roof and we have to be prepared. We need enough people and we need our franchise business owners to have enough people to take advantage of that market next year and into the future.